Thank you to Brilliant.org for supporting PBS Digital Studios. Oh, hey, smart people. I was just, you know, selfieing on the Google Arts and Culture app. It finds your face in famous artworks, your art doppelganger, if you will. Mine is, um, I'm not sure. But this made me wonder, why do some faces look the same to us? And how do we even recognize faces? I mean, there's nearly 8 billion people on Earth. Does someone else have your face? Every day as you scroll through social media, you see dozens, maybe hundreds of faces. Your brain analyzes them and matches them to an identity without you even consciously thinking about it. But what would you do if you were scrolling through Instagram and saw your own face? This is Amanda Green. This is not Amanda Green. And this is Amanda Green again. I'll let her explain. A couple years ago, I found my lookalike, and it was the strangest but most exciting thing that's probably ever happened to me, and now I have a great story to tell at parties. A friend of Amanda's saw a picture online that looked like her, but it wasn't Amanda. It was someone who shared Amanda's face. After she posted the photos, the internet found her doppelganger, a girl named Meredith from Indiana, who, wow, looks exactly like her. At least I think so. I think it's when um, it was trending in second place on BuzzFeed, like under Kim Kardashian, that I was like, this is really bizarre. <laughs> but after Amanda and Meredith's photos went viral, some people argued that they didn't actually look alike because it's the internet and people will argue about anything. Some people were like, you guys look absolutely nothing alike. Um, I don't get why this is even a story. And other people were like, okay, that's the same person posted twice. It was like Yanni and Laurel, but for faces. Even Amanda's family was divided. My mom did think we looked alike. My husband, he said that he couldn't really see it, but he kind of sucks with faces anyways. So why do people see different things in the same two faces? Well, the answer gives us a clue about what doppelgangers really are. A strange side effect of how our brains process faces. So what is a face? Well, duh, Joe. It's the eyes and the mouth and the nose and the dimples in the cheeks, the color of the eyebrows. All of these features together create a picture that you present to the world, your face. But a picture of a face isn't really what your brain sees when you look at someone. When we recognize anything, we're comparing what we see with a stored mental picture that's encoded in our brain. It turns out special cells in our brains are active only when we look at faces, and they're not active when we look at other things. So what are these facial recognition neurons actually seeing? This person in Ariana Grande's Thank You Next video really looks like Lindsay Lohan, but it isn't Lindsay Lohan. Sure, her red hair and the mean girl's outfit are part of why we're fooled, but watch what happens when we overlay their faces. The geometry of the face, how the features are arranged with respect to one another, is almost identical, even if the specific features, like the eyebrows and the tip of the nose, are different. The same thing is true for Amanda and Meredith. If you really look at our mouth or our nose, it might not look similar, but they're in like the exact same place. Like if you drew like lines across your face, like my nose and my mouth and my eyes hit at the exact same places as hers. In the areas of our brain that recognize faces, we think certain neurons fire for eyes that are this far apart, others for a mouth that's here, or a nose that's this long. This combination of nerves firing creates a map or a code called a facial schema. To our brains, a face isn't a picture, it's a pattern. And if one of those coded patterns shows up somewhere unexpected, we can see a face even if it's not there. It's an effect called pareidolia. Now take a look at this photo of George W. Bush and Dick Cheney. It's actually George W. Bush and George W. Bush. Did you notice? Recognize this guy? Maybe he seems a little familiar, but you can't quite place it. It's two people, 
Harrison Ford and George Clooney. When they're together, our brains decode them as just one face. And here are two photos of the same person. Give them a quick look. Okay, now let's flip the image. All of these are examples of how we get fooled because our brains usually don't pay attention to the details of faces. We don't have cameras in our heads. We're running pattern recognition software between our ears. And I guess this means we need a firmware upgrade. Of course, the more time we spend with people, the better we can tell their face apart from others because our face software gets help from our long-term memory. Like, we could all tell if the president was replaced by some body double named Dave or something, right? You're a very handsome man. Thank you, Mr. President. You come for the science, but you stay for the very current pop culture references. But if you don't know two people, like Meredith and Amanda, you're more likely to think that they look alike. Researchers at Cambridge University developed a face memory test that you can take for yourself. As it turns out, I am very good at remembering new faces. And speaking of remembering faces, did you notice that we just switched Amanda and Meredith's photos? Some people are just better at facial recognition than others, and scientists don't really know why. People who don't think Amanda and Meredith look alike are probably able to sense details in their face patterns that others can't. But what if someone's life depended on your ability to recognize and tell faces apart? Would you trust yourself? Well, that's exactly what Dr. Tegan Lucas does. She's a professional face identifier, or more accurately, a forensic anthropologist who specializes in facial anatomy. If police need to identify someone from an image, they turn to her for help. To the naked eye, these people may seem to look the same. And then if you call someone like me in, we would be able to tell uh, slight differences between them because we're trained to look for very, very minuscule things. Let's imagine a face as a Rubik's Cube. It might seem like you can only get so many combinations of nose, eye, and mouth shapes before you get a duplicate. That's something that my research concentrates on is talking about probabilities of facial characteristics and body characteristics, you know, the probability of finding two people with the same face or two people with the same body. And we found that these probabilities are comparable with DNA and fingerprints. So our face is just as unique as a fingerprint or as DNA. If we factor in just eight facial measurements, the odds of two people having the same face are about one in a trillion. So basically impossible. If I look at a nose, I see maybe wide or skinny or how much it sticks up. Dr. Lucas sees nose width, bridge width, tip size, tip shape, tip angle, the angle in relation to the chin, the forehead, how much the nose protrudes. She knows her stuff. Even if you take something as simple as the ear, the ear is unique between each and every individual. And there's enough anatomical characteristics on the ear that we can actually identify someone from the ear. And I've had cases of that. So someone has, has robbed a bank with like a balaclava that was on completely the wrong way and his ear was showing and we matched them up. And you know I asked her about the David Schwimmer lookalike thief. Yeah, I, I picked quite a few differences, mostly in the nose, and he had a very square chin, the David Schwimmer lookalike. And then I looked at David Schwimmer like, oh yeah, I could put this to rest in five minutes. So I asked her to compare Amanda and Meredith. Here is what she found. So Amanda had a triangular eyebrow shape, meaning she had a bit of an arch in the most superior corner of the eyebrows, whereas Meredith had a straight eyebrow. Uh, Amanda had an oval face shape, whereas Meredith had a more elliptical face shape. Amanda had a V-shaped upper lip, but in Meredith, she has what we call a Cupid's bow, meaning they project upwards, but they're more rounded. And Amanda had a rounded bottom lip, whereas Meredith had a W-shaped bottom lip. So it kind of had those points, but on the bottom. In Amanda, she had what we call a nasolabialis fold. It's these folds here, and she's got them quite prominently, even when she doesn't smile, whereas Meredith doesn't have those folds at all, unlike Amanda. Doppelgangers are never identical matches, but they don't have to be to cause problems. 
Dr. Lucas is working on a case right now involving someone who's been in prison for over a decade, maybe by mistake, because their face might look enough like someone else's. Facial recognition is, is very unreliable. In that moment, when you're actually calling upon someone to recall their memory, entirely unreliable. So if we get fooled so often, maybe computers could do better than humans? But I don't know. Computers can see a face in someone's knee. Or there was the time that an automated surveillance system in China publicly shamed a woman for jaywalking after seeing her face on the side of a bus. But what if we let computers teach themselves how to recognize faces? Maybe they could get fooled less than we do. Why don't you try to find the matching photo? A computer can do this almost instantly. A company called Thorn developed this software to help find missing kids. We've been able to help uh, investigators identify about eight kids uh, every day. Thorn fed images into a machine intelligence and let it learn over time until it was able to identify where a face is, pick out its important features, and match similar faces together. What I find most interesting is that they didn't train it to see faces like we do. It's evolved its own way of recognizing faces, just like our own brains evolved neural networks that help us recognize each other. But where computers or machine intelligence really makes the difference, it's capable of uh, memorizing such a large number of, uh, of people. Uh, I think uh, a human being can remember at most, let's say 5,000 faces. For a computer, it's uh, pretty straightforward the help of machine intelligence to even memorize a million people or several million people. The AI isn't perfect, but neither are our own abilities. But our powers combined can have serious potential. If we think of a face like a lost needle, AI makes the haystack way smaller from the get-go. Yeah, I think that's where, really where we are mostly going uh, uh, towards, like five million faces, where is this one particular uh, person? Uh, and enable us to do things we weren't able to do uh, before. That's, that's very exciting. So science tells us that technically, doppelgangers don't exist. Every face that's ever been is unique yours, mine, even between identical twins. But science has also shown us that we're really good at fooling ourselves, even when something is right in front of our face. Stay curious. I wanna say a big thank you to brilliant.org for supporting PBS Digital Studios and our show. Is it me or is it some evil lookalike? I'll never tell, but I do know it would be so much easier to learn all the things if I had a doppelganger or two running around, but then I'd have to figure out how we could all share a brain and all that, but a much easier way to sharpen your scientific skills and have fun doing it is to check out brilliant.org. Brilliant is about learning through actual problem solving, not just watching stuff. They have sequences focused on machine learning and neural networks, which are exactly what people like Ruben and his team use to train their computers to do what the universe's most complex computers, our brains, already do so well. To solve problems like this, and ones we haven't even thought of yet, you need a framework for thinking about and solving them. Brilliant is a place that you can do that. Brilliant, math and science, done right, proud to support It's Okay to Be Smart. To learn more about Brilliant, you can go to brilliant.org slash be smart.